Hello, Courier Nation. Welcome to the Deliver on Your Business podcast, where you are the boss. Each week, we talk about how to make the most of your business as an independent contractor, as a courier delivering for gig economy apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, and so many others. Well, welcome back, Courier Nation. And uh, I tell you what, 2020 is getting to be just, it's, it's just bound to determine to be that year that nobody's ever going to forget, isn't it? You know, I'm not even sure I want to find out what's next. It's just been one of those years. We're not going to get into that, though, today. I want to talk about something else. But before they do that, I want to get into that little sponsorship thing. Or as I said in the newsletter I sent out last week, I call it kind of the semi-sponsored section. To get, I guess you can't call it fully sponsored because I'm the sponsor, right? But uh, I'd like to invite you, if you're looking for maybe something to wear while you're out on deliveries, head on over to the, to the Independent Delivery Professional Gear Shop. Uh, it's a uh, little storefront that we've got set up at, uh, uh, what it does is it gives you a variety of different, uh, shirts, polo shirts, dress shirts, t-shirts. Uh, there's some outerwear. You can even get hats with the independent delivery professional logo on there. And, and what the, the whole idea of that is just to give you something to give you a professional look, but without necessarily having to wear the logo of DoorDash or Grubhub or any of those, you kind of identify yourself as a delivery pro. It sets you apart. But, you know, still, you know, and, and you got a variety of different colors, styles, all that stuff. So you can go check it out if you'd like. The question for today, are the hot spots for DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, Uber Eats, if any of them show those things, are those the best places to hang out to get good delivery offers? Now, some of the apps, they don't give you a real hot spot. Grubhub gives you kind of a historical heat map. And it's not even real time, but you know, it's a, I guess the biggest question isn't as much that as it is, is there a good place to hang out? Where is the best place to go to get deliveries? That's something that I've been thinking about this a lot. I had a couple people asking me about, Hey, well, you think this would be a good thing to talk about? I thought, yeah, yeah, it sounds like it would be. And ultimately, let me just put it in a nutshell. I think the best place to go deliver is wherever the best place is to go deliver. I know you're thinking, thanks for nothing, guy. Here's here's the thing. I think there are a lot of different things that go on with all of this. And and ultimately, as time goes on, you get a feel for what actually is the best place. And a lot of times it's not those places that they tell you are the best places to hang out. And And I think the more experience you get with it, the better you get at it. We'll talk about that a little bit, though. I want to talk about a few things that you can think about with that. You know, understanding that question, I think when I got started, that was one of the hardest things to figure out. And um, I think it's probably easier if you live real close to a lot of the restaurants that are doing delivery. Where I live, there's there's a row that's not too far away that's got a lot of fast food places. And I think at the time um, when I started a couple of years ago, I think the subway over there was maybe the closest or the only one that was really doing much in delivery. and And that one wasn't doing much. And so, you know, if I turned on, I started out with Uber Eats. If I turned on the app, all of the deliveries were several miles away. In fact, that's kind of how I got started those first few days where I was driving all over the place, all four corners of town, driving a lot of miles, not making a lot of money, and that wasn't going to work. So I had to start figuring out, you know, where do I go? How, where, where do I go to try and find the best offers? And, you know, is it, should I go downtown? Uh, there's a lot of restaurants there, but the parking is terrible. Or uh, what about in the suburbs? And parking isn't a problem there in the suburbs, but now everything is all spread out. So what is the best option? And one of the first YouTubers I got was, it was on the app lifestyle. Uh, it was one of the first ones that I went to. His name was Elijah. He's been on the uh, podcast before talking about a book that he'd written. But he had put together a series of different things that uh, kind of help people get started with their delivery work. Uh, and in particular, he focused on Uber Eats. And one of the most helpful things that I found was he did have, do a, a video on, he called, you know, he talked about hot spots. Uh, at the time, Uber Eats wasn't really showing anything as far as hot spots. But he also talked about something that he called money spots. That after a while, you figure out the places where the good paying restaurants are. And uh, he's got some good information that I think still applies, even though it's a couple of years and Uber Eats has changed a lot since then. And I'll put a link to his video in the show notes. But 
I think over time, I just ended up cobbling together some advice from different people. I looked at different ideas. Then as I got to know my market better, I started paying more attention to what was working for me. And here's the thing, though, when you talk about this, and that's why it's kind of a hard one to really say, because I see a lot of people that give a lot of advice about these are the kinds of places you should go. And I don't think there is a particular place that I can tell you to go, because the bottom line is what's going to work for me may not work for you. Um, and, you know, the, I, I've gotten to a point, actually, what works for me right now would not have worked for me when I started out. I spent a lot of time delivering downtown here in Denver. And when I started, I didn't want to touch downtown. So a lot of it has to do with, you know, your comfort levels. Are you more comfortable in more crowded areas? Uh, do you like more just driving around in you know some of the suburbs where things are a little more wide open? Maybe the traffic isn't as bad, different things like that. I'm sure that there are places where some people can make a killing where I'd be spinning in circles, you know. The bottom line is I don't think there is a best place to go. And and so I'm not going to try and tell you where to go in this. What I want to do is kind of walk you through maybe what I went through, what worked for me, or how I figured out what worked for me. And maybe that can help you kind of craft your own plan as far as what works for you. And so, you know, the reality is there's not always one way that always works. And in fact, for me, um, there are different days that different things work a little bit better. And there are some days I just say, screw it. As far as picking a spot, I'm just taking orders and going where they lead. And there are some days where that just works beautifully, you know, but sometimes that same kind of thing can leave me languishing. But here are really the things that worked for me. This is kind of the process that I went through. And this is how I started figuring out where to go. I started with the areas that I knew. Then I developed an understanding of the kind of delivery that works best for me. I start gathering some different ideas from other people. I put a lot of focus on getting to know my market and especially getting to know what was really profitable. And then when all that was said and done, I kind of put together my own approach. So maybe that's a process that might work for you. So let's just kind of talk through some of those different steps there and see if those are things that might help you out is figuring out kind of a, a better idea of where you're going to go. And the first part is really start with what you know. Um, I found out something, you know, right away, I got an order that took me into downtown. And when I started out, downtown was a black hole for me, because I didn't know the area, I didn't know where to park. And, and Denver is an odd place. Denver's got a really weird layout. If you know Denver, you know what I'm talking about. Denver is one of these cities where almost the whole metro area is this north and south grid, or east west grid. And, uh, you know, so you got your streets at you got your two main streets and you got your numbering off of that. And even the uh, streets are in alphabetical order. So it makes it kind of easy to find your way around until you get to downtown because then the downtown area sits at a 45 degree angle off of all those other streets. And so it's really weird. You can drive down one street and you cross 14th street two different times. There's two different 14th streets, you know, and one is kind of this east west 14th street. And then you got the angled version of 14th street. We've got a river and in the interstate down uh, on the uh, west side of the downtown area and figuring out the entrances into downtown from that part of town, that could be a bear. And then, you know, trying to decide which interstate exit gets you to the best part of downtown. And then when you're on the grid, you know, like I mentioned, you get your street numbering. It goes east and west or it goes north, south. And it's, you know, uh, 100 block is one block off of the center street, 200 blocks, so on like that. And there's a spot where I can tell you one street in particular where within one block, you go from the 1000 block west. So basically, it's supposedly 10 blocks west of the main street, right, to 1200 block east. In one block, you're covering 22 blocks. How do you do that? You do that by putting your uh, downtown in an angled place like you do. And it's just weird. And then you got the parking on top of that. And, and the whole thing is just saying, I avoided downtown like the plague for the longest time because I just didn't know it that well. I didn't know where to park. I could just go in circles all day trying to find a place to park to either deliver or or pick up. And I just decided I have, I want nothing to do with that. And when I got started, I think I was going all over the place. And so I worked these towns. They took me all over, all you know, four corners of town. I could put a lot of miles on. I think a lot of people get caught up in that. You know, you kind of take everything and you go wherever it takes you. And, 
you know, there's just some places I kind of started figuring out that even if, even if I've got GPS, it's best for me to kind of stay out of that area because I could still get lost. One of the best things that happened to me, though, was to finally decide, you know what, I'm going to focus more on the parts of town that I know really well. And that did two things for me. One, it helped me to understand. It was kind of part of this transition of figuring out that I don't have to take every order. I don't have to just grab everything that comes in. I can be selective. And so I started rejecting these orders that were going to pull me way out of my area. And the other thing is that it let me just kind of focus on a certain set of restaurants, a, a certain set of streets where I got to be really good at figuring my way in and out. You know how it is with parking lots and things like that. Sometimes there's a back way to get in. Sometimes there are just different things you can do that can speed up your getting in and out of there. So you kind of learn those things. And that helped me to become really efficient right within that area. And then over time, I kind of was able to spread my wings, get to know other things. So that was the first thing that I did was get to know the stuff right in the areas that I knew well so that I'm, I'm not kind of spinning my wheels in places that I'm not as comfortable. And I think that just comes, you know, over a process of time. But but give yourself that chance to really focus first on the places that you really know and then let yourself spread out. Now, the second thing that I put in here, when I first wrote the list, I think I put this down as number four. And I realized, no, no, this was the thing that I really needed to do first before I could get really good at figuring out a couple of different things to do. And it's just to understand for myself, what is it that makes a good delivery? Because here's the thing. If you don't know what really is the best kind of delivery for you, then how do you know what to look for in any particular area? You, you see what I'm saying there? Now, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I'm, I go against the grain from a lot of the people that, uh, you know, are experts out there. Um, or they, they, they claim themselves to be experts, especially in the Facebook groups and things like that. Well, you find out when you talk to a lot of them, they're not as much as they say, but that's probably true of me too. I'm probably not as much of an expert as I think, even though I'm sitting here. Well, anyway, you know, but the thing is, is like, you know, you get people that are down on Uber Eats and I'm finding they're one of my most profitable options. A lot of people that hate downtown and maybe because it's so many people that hate downtown, it just makes it a better place for me to go. And so... You know, there's a popular sentiment out there that you only take those $5 deliveries. Don't take anything less, or you only take higher paying deliveries. Don't take anything less than 8 or $10. And I find that, you know what? You give me $5, 10, $10 minute deliveries, I'll do those all day because um, that's a $30 an hour pace. And there's not a lot of driving that goes with that. So you're not wearing your car down as much. So it's it's just things like that. And as I started to understand those kinds of things, as I started to understand what made a great delivery, I think it made it easier then to eventually start evaluating different areas. And most people, they're going to focus on the dollar amount. You know, oh, is it a, uh, is that a $20 delivery? Yeah, that's absolutely a good delivery to take. Is that a $5 delivery? Nope, 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 not going to take it. You see what I'm saying there? And, but I think when you just look at it that way, you pass up some things that could actually make you a lot of money when you start kind of reshifting how you think. And sometimes you end up taking something you think is going to be great and it just gets you stuck in a quagmire, you know? Um, I will tell you that sometimes those $5 deliveries, if they're short, if it's a restaurant, I know I'm going to be able to get done fast. Give me six of those in an hour and I'm going to make more money than the person that takes that $20 delivery. And they got to drive 45 minutes and, uh, you know, it's 10 miles of driving. So there's a lot more cost in doing that delivery. And, and they're going to make less money per hour. Here's the thing that I really encourage you to do. When, when you talk about this, I really, really, really encourage you, think in terms of profit per hour. Because you're going to be so much better at picking the play, best places to go and the best deliveries to take. Now, a couple of episodes early on in the podcast really help out with that. If you go to episode eight, that's entrecourier.com slash eight, real simple, or episode nine, entrecourier slash dot com slash nine. Episode eight talks about measuring performance and especially getting into calculating your profit per hour, because you can do that on a delivery by delivery basis. Episode nine takes that a step further into what I call the 40 cent rule, where, you know, until more recently, my rule was it had to pay 40 cents a minute. And... Now I'm getting up to about 50 cents a minute. But the thing is, and I might drop back down when uh, things get back to normal, but 
The thing is, you look at a delivery and instead of how much it's going to pay, how much is it paying for the amount of time that it's going to take me to deliver? And you can estimate how long the delivery is going to take, how much it's going to pay, and get an idea very quickly, how much per minute. And $0.40 cents a minute is $24, cent, $24 an hour. $0.50 cents a minute is $30 an hour. You find your sweet spot. You find where you want to go. You find the rate that you want to hit. And when you start deliver, evaluating your deliveries on an individual delivery-by-delivery delivery basis on how they measure up, I think it makes it easier to evaluate how often you're getting the deliveries that fit what you need to make in a certain area. It makes it easier for you to evaluate what parts of town you need to work in. Now, the third step was you get some input. And like I mentioned, Elijah's video, I've got a link for that. But uh, um, he had some good advice that at least helped me start thinking in terms of where the restaurants were. Uh, as I centered on a particular area and I started getting deliveries that would take me out of the area, there's always that question, you know, should I, should I double back? Should I deadhead back to where I was? Cause that's where I'm comfortable, but I'm losing time that way. Should I take orders from where I dropped off? And so it was the kind of thing that I had to start thinking a little bit more about how do I handle these things? You know, what's the best way to handle whether or not to stay in a certain zone that works or do some different things. So I talked to a lot of people. I asked what they were doing. I found out what was working for them. Now, as I said before, what works for me may not work for you. What works for you, I could be dead in the water with trying to do. Um, because sometimes it's just different styles. And a lot of times it's different markets. But what I did do was to start paying attention to advice from others. And that's what I really encourage you to do is at least look around. You know, see what people are doing. Don't follow them just because it works for somebody. You got to think about it. You got to evaluate it. And that's why I decided that number two that I said understanding what a good delivery is, is so important at number two, because once you understand what a good delivery is for you, once you've got an idea of what you need to do, what you need to make, once you've made that decision, then you can kind of evaluate some of the advice that's out there. So there's a lot of things I learned through the School of Hard Knocks, and I wish that people had told me or had been able to find out because then it would have maybe saved me a lot of headache. Now, where do you find that advice? There's always search, you know, there's a possibility. Maybe you found this podcast episode or you found the uh, web page that goes with this particular episode by doing just exactly that. Google's been nice to me. I'm not going to complain there. And uh, I've been finding a lot more people finding the website through Google search. And, and that's cool. But uh, I hope that what I do share on the website and the podcast is helpful to you. But here's something that I would invite you to do. I invite you to follow me on Twitter. I know that sounds very self-serving, doesn't it? I mean, okay, I'm, 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 I'm really fine with having followers. I like that. Just look for Entree Courier on Twitter. But it's not so much about following me as it is, I think by following me, you can find a lot of good advice from other people. Uh, right now, I'm only at 100 and uh, so I'm hopefully I'm, I'm really, really hoping that I'm dating myself by saying that, because hopefully someday it's going to be a lot more than that. Honestly, I don't know that I worry too much. I haven't put a lot of effort into Twitter and 100 people is pretty tiny in the Twitterverse. But it's not about following me as much as it is that by following me, um, there's there's been a number of people that I've been interacting that have been interacting with me. There's been kind of this fun little growing community of drivers lately that, you know, we've gotten together. We've, you know, we've just kind of chatted about different ideas. Somebody asks a question. We all throw in our two cents. And the cool thing about it is everybody's so cool about it. You know, you don't see anybody saying, oh, this is the only way to do it. It's kind of, hey, this is what works for me. And, and it's something that I know I went into some Facebook groups hoping to find that and, and yeah, forget about Facebook groups. So maybe, you know, by following me, that'll kind of put you in touch with some of the other people. And, you know, I kind of want to throw out a lot of people, a lot of names, but in doing that, I don't want to forget some names either, you know? So that's why I just say, follow me and you'll be able to find out pretty quickly a lot of the people that are interacting and, uh, you can start to get some good advice. You can throw in some good advice. So go join us all over in the Twitterverse. I mentioned Facebook groups. Folks, there's a lot of very bitter, nasty people in Facebook groups. I, you know, I still go to them and mostly I go there to get a feel for what people are talking about, what people are asking about. And that helps me figure out, you know, what kind of questions to try and answer on the website. So it's, it's got a value, but man, I tell you what, you got to be good at filtering out all the garbage because like I said, there's just bitter people. 
And so that's one where I will say there are times that it's been helpful. And there are times more than anything, I think for me, maybe the biggest value on Facebook is kind of, you get a feel for when, when the apps are down and, uh, or when different things are going on. Sometimes you get a feel for when news is breaking and then you get a lot of really, you, you get a lot of the same questions over and over and over and stuff like that. And you get a lot of nasty, bitter people. Sometimes I walk away from the Facebook pages and sometimes from Reddit, just feeling like I need a shower after I'm done with that. So be careful with some of those things. There are some YouTube guys that are, that are really good. I, I encourage you to check out um, Gig Coach Jake used to put out a lot of videos and uh, he's got, you know, probably stronger opinions than I do on some things, but he also had some very good practical stuff, uh, so stuff that had helped me a lot. Uh, UDM is another one to look for. And uh, another one is Bentley Coop. And uh, I think he calls it DoorDash Diaries. And, you know, they all have like some really good practical stuff. There's a lot of guys out there that have some stuff. And so it's it's like everything else. You know, you weigh everything with where you are. And that's why I really encourage you to understand first what works for you. Because then you have a filter be able to measure all that different advice. I'm going to throw out a couple of ideas that some people have brought up. You know, when we're talking about getting advice from others, I'm going to throw out a couple of things that some people have thrown out there that may be helpful to you. I got one guy that uh, on Twitter, uh, he goes by the name of Uptate Yankee Hustler. It's like upstate, but without the S. And uh, he's pretty cool. And uh, But he had one idea where I think he kind of reverse engineered this whole where to go idea. Most of us are thinking about the restaurants, right? We're thinking about which restaurants are the best ones to pick up with. And so you position yourself in a place where it's easy to pick them up. But he kind of has a, a different way of looking at it. And especially during lunchtime, he said what works really well for him during lunch, and this is a quote from him that he emailed over, he said, I look for clusters of lower end merchants that are near to large apartment complexes, office complexes, and businesses like factories or hospitals. So basically what he does is he's paying attention to where the people are that are going to be ordering and then finding the little uh, restaurants, kind of the smaller places that are real close by. I would imagine sandwich shops, maybe some fast food places, things like that. And, and so he kind of finds those restaurants that are close to those. And he said it works really well. I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of one of those against the green people. And that's probably one of the reasons that as I thought about that more, I kind of liked it. And it was interesting because when you first mentioned that on Twitter, a couple of people were like, really? You don't uh, pay as much attention to the restaurant? But the more I thought about it, I, there's, I think there's some sense in that. Because sometimes going against, against the green really works. Because when everybody is trying one thing, that just means there's more people competing. And so what he's done is he's kind of picked these areas where – Nobody else is really thinking about it as much. And the thing about it is, we get back to what I said about those little, you know, smaller deliveries. When you can get those little fast, casual places, the little uh, fast food places that they're going to have the food ready. You know, a lot of your sandwich shops, a lot of uh, sometimes even like your bowls and your pho and different places like that, where if they can get the, if they normally get the food out really fast, man, you could just go boom, 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 you know, by uh Picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off. And if you know that area and things like that, you can just really get going. There's a place by a University of Denver that uh, sometimes I'll get there and I'll get into a groove and I can be getting four to five deliveries in an hour there. And when that's happening, I'm, I'm not even thinking about how much any one delivery is going to be because I know that eventually I know that it's going to average out to well above $30 an hour. And, and that's what the bottom line is. Another piece of advice, there's, there's a guy that uh, he's just kind of recently started up his blog. He's been up on Twitter also. He goes by the name The Master Dasher. It's themasterdasher.com, I believe. I've got a link in the show notes. Now, by the name, you can tell that he really focuses on advice on how to do things with DoorDash. And he got a, he had an article, I'll put a link to that, talking about hot spots because DoorDash really does probably push those hot spots a little bit more. You know, they kind of put that thing up there that says, go hang out by this such and such restaurant. That's the best place to go. And a lot of people think, yeah, maybe that is the best place to go, right? Problem is, is everybody else thinks that. So everybody's flocking over to these little hot spots there. And when they get into these zones that all of a sudden are super busy and they get a lot of peak pay, everybody flocks into those. So they think they're going to make good money and they're sitting around waiting more. So he's got some good advice about that. I really advise you to go check out his article. 
And uh, at, again, yeah, I think it's it's another against the grain type of approach that really works. And so when an app says in some way that says, hey, we need people in this zone, everybody flocks to that zone. And all of a sudden you've got more couriers than you do have orders. And it just takes a long time for you to get your next order. So his advice is pretty simple. Uh, he said on the article, he said, in my experience, your best bet is to create your own hotspot. And he even walks through a process. He says it better, so much better than I could. And so go read his article. But one of the things he talks about is, you know, go into like with DoorDash. I know you can also do this with Grubhub. Uh, I wasn't able to pull up the map on Uber Eats. But in DoorDash, he said, you go and then you click on pickup and you can get a map of all the restaurants that do pickup. And so you at least know a lot of these places that are at least on the platform, right? And so you can see these clusters of restaurants. And if you go to the article that I put up on the website that's linked to this episode, I even got a picture of a cluster like that here in my area. And the thing about it is, is you can kind of go hang out in the middle, right in the center of one of these clusters, but he's taking that a little bit further because he says, you find some places where you've got two or three clusters that are close to each other. And he starts kind of hanging out right in between them. So he's very close to all three of those. And it just gives him a whole lot more variety of orders. So it's things like that. Listen for good advice. Weigh the other advice you get. Uh, there's a lot of bad advice out there also. But that's why, again, get a good understanding first of what a good delivery is, because once you've got that, then you can kind of weigh that and say, okay, does that advice give me what I'm looking for? Use that second tip to evaluate the third tip. Like I mentioned, you know, with uh, one update with his strategy on the uh, restaurants there, he was questioning a little bit, but based on where a lot of people were and everything like that, when I start looking at that idea that you can get this delivery done often in 10 or 15 minutes, and if you're doing, you know, if I'm shooting for instead of $12 per delivery, if I'm shooting for a profit of $30 an hour, well, you know what? Even some of those smaller deliveries, if I can get them done really, really fast, I can make what I want to make. And a lot of times it's actually a lot easier, even if you're doing more deliveries. But the stores are close to the customers. And when I start kind of weighing it against that, even though it goes against the grain of what I think would work, it's like, okay. That's starting to make a little bit more sense. So use that kind of thing. Use, use your understanding of, you know, what your criteria is for a delivery. What is it that really makes a good delivery? Use that to evaluate the advice that's out there. So that's enough about advice. Number four, get to know your market. And this one, I could put it number one. I could put it number five. It kind of fits in between all of them. Because really, to be able to do any of the others, you got to know what's going on with your market. You got to know the restaurants that are fast. You got to know the restaurants that are slow. You got to know traffic. You got to know all those different things like that. You know, and like I said, you know, I think that's why it works so well. An updates uh, example because he knows he knows the customers. You know, he knows where the people are, and he knows the kind of places that just fit in real nicely for him. Now, here's one thing that I did. A long time ago, I started tracking every delivery. I actually write down, you know, the start and end time, the start and end miles of every delivery. And now I can tell you exactly how much I make per hour on Grubhub deliveries, on Uber Eats deliveries, on DoorDash deliveries, and how much I make every Tuesday and Monday. And I took that a little bit further where I started marking what part of town it was in. I marked down different regions. And so I started doing that and understanding how much per hour I was making downtown and in certain suburbs. And I was not prepared for the results. I got results I didn't want to get because the results told me downtown was the best place for me to make, to make money. Even with all the troubles I had, I was still making more money with downtown. I, I was already starting to get a little bit of a feel for what I was doing, but it was because all the deliveries were short and fast and they still paid generally about as well as anywhere else. And so I started figuring out that downtown was more profitable than anywhere else. And I started finding out that these suburbs that I liked to work in were actually the worst. It felt faster because traffic was easier and it felt better because the deliveries tended to pay higher. But when you figured out the amount of time that it took because you had to drive so much further and the extra cost of all that driving, 
it actually was cost, it, it, it was paying a lot less. So it was those kinds of things that helped me out. And then, you know, once I figured out that downtown paid so much better, okay, now let's make it even better still. And that's when I started focusing a lot more on downtown. And when I put a lot of effort into learning different places that I could park, you know, where are the alleys that I can park? Where are the loading zones where I won't get in trouble? Where are those places that always seem to have an open parking spot, you know? And where are the places where it's actually an awful lot faster to walk a block or two than it is to try and drive around and park or where I can get out, you know, real fast as opposed to getting stuck in the flow of traffic and things like that. And once you kind of learn those things, you know, that, that takes us back to the part about, um, you know, just a little bit more of getting to know your market. And once you learn all of those things, it's kind of like, you know, we're back at square one where it was like, you know, work in the areas that you know, the more you get to know that area, the faster you get. And it's just kind of like a continuous loop there, isn't it? So in step number one, Start with what you know, and inevitably, you're going to have deliveries that take you out of that zone. It just always happens that way. So use that opportunity to get to know other areas, to branch out, uh, to get a little more comfortable with different places. And you'll be surprised. It doesn't take long for you to get really comfortable. I've actually kind of just about figured out everything about downtown. In two years, you would hope I would, even uh, you know, doing some on the bike and stuff. But that one's still going to take some time because Denver's just kind of a little wonky that way. Last step, create your own strategies around the hotspots when it comes to DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, other platforms. Because here's the crazy thing. After all of this, with what's turned into, I'm now up over 30 minutes on a podcast on how to create a strategy, I'm kind of at a point right now where I almost don't have a strategy anymore. I just go out there. I think it's more because I'm kind of on autopilot with the strategy as far as where to go, but I don't focus on any one place anymore. And part of that is because so much has changed in different things. You know, in the last couple of months, I don't do as much downtown because there aren't as many people downtown. So maybe not quite as much business downtown in the last couple of months, but it's still worked real well when I've been there. Um, It's been kind of a crazy couple of months where everything seems to be working good in just about all the areas. So a lot of the rules are out the window right now. But what I've found a lot of times is, I don't, I'm not one to kind of deadhead back to a zone after I've dropped off an order. Unless that order has dropped off somewhere that is in one of those long drive areas that you, when you do get an order, it's going to be a long drive and ultimately not going to pay that much. I get out of those areas. You know, I avoid those things like the plague, but I've got the apps on, I've got all the apps on looking for something that's going to kind of take me the direction where I want to go. But, you know, m- Beyond that, generally what I'm doing is I take an order where it drops off. I'm looking for something close to me uh, because it's all about efficiency. It's just move, move, move. And sometimes I'll get those times where it's like, okay, three or four or five offers in a row are duds. They're not going to work. And so then I'll make my way back to something, you know, kind of one of those personal, as, as Elijah would call it, a money spot for me or something. And, and, but then I've still got the apps on ready to take something if something comes up close. And so, you know, it's just after a while, I've kind of figured out what works for me. And, uh, and, and part of it is, like I said, I think you get to a point where you're kind of on autopilot. You get to a point where you just realize, okay, this is going to work. And after a while, it becomes almost automatic when I get that delivery that takes me way out to the outskirts of Centennial on the edge of town. It's like, no way I'm taking that because it's going to take a long time for me to get something that is profitable and bring me back to where I live. So, you know, I evaluate each delivery based on the potential profit per hour. And then if I, if it is a delivery that's going to pay really well, but it's taking me somewhere I don't want to be, I include that return time in my evaluation there because uh, there's a possibility that I'm looking at 15 minutes to come back that I'm not getting paid for. So I better get paid enough for those 15 minutes. You see what I'm saying? Now, that might not work in a lot of markets. Uh, there's some places where the only thing that really does work is working out of one or two different zones. And there's markets that, you know what, things are a little more dangerous than where they are for me. So it's all about knowing your market. It's about knowing whether deliveries in certain parts of your market meet your criteria. And one thing I want to do to wrap up is just kind of a quick note about, I said something about dangerous areas because this is, you know, one of those interesting times. And lately, as I record this, potentially dangerous situations, 
you know, we're sitting in a curfew right now. Uh, I'm sitting home at night, not delivering because there's a curfew going on. And so and with, with the unrest, with the rioting uh, related to the death of, of George Floyd, and I tell you what, that's, that's a topic that I've actually started and I've stopped writing a couple of times about that particular situation. And part of it was because I realized, you know what, people are going to be asking about that. People are going to be you know, searching for, should I be delivering right now while these riots are happening? So I thought, well, I can get a lot of traffic, but I just, I, I didn't feel right about it because I just didn't feel right about using that situation to draw a lot of people into traffic to my website. Folks, there's a lot of deep hurt out there right now, and it's been brought to the surface once again. Now, I've got a lot of mixed feelings about this whole thing. What happened to George Floyd was wrong. There's there's no way around it. Um, I look at the rioting as wrong. You know, when you're when you're burning down people's businesses and taking stuff and all that, you can't justify that. Now, I was I was especially angry when that first started because I thought, you idiots. Right after this popped, right after the news came out, I just felt like, you know, there was almost like a unity out there that this should not have happened. Something's got to be done here. And it just felt like when the riots started, it took all the attention away from that. And that was my first thought. But you know something? I also realized something else, too. There have been a couple of times that I've just done some things that I really regret in my life. Really stupid, really dumb, really unfortunate things. They're things that I don't think define who I am, but they're things that happened really in the midst of some very, very extreme feelings, emotions, and things. I don't think they change who I am as a person. And there's a lot of extreme emotions going on right now. And and there are some people that I think are agitating this stuff, and that's a little bit different. But a lot of people get caught in up in that with those emotions that are going on. So I'm not going to say that what's happening with the rioting defines whoever's involved with that either. There's some deep feelings out there. And there's so many people out there that every one of them matters. Every one of them has got a name. They've got a story. They've got a reason to be out there. They've got a reason that this impacts them. And I want to honor every single one of them, you know. So... That's that's kind of what I want to say about that situation. Um, it brings me back to this question about dangerous areas, because at the same time, I'm not delivering downtown right now, because that's the area that's more likely to see violence. That's the area that's more likely to have traffic blocked because of so many people that are congregated in certain areas. And so it's going to be harder to get around. So there's there's kind of a common sense part to that. Um, I'm not delivering tonight. Because of these curfews, I delivered last night, but I delivered in suburbs that didn't have the curfews in place. I was still kind of nervous about that last mile driving in because I live about a mile within town. And, you know, there's kind of an interesting feeling about that. I tweeted about this, but, you know, driving that last mile and I'm thinking, am I going to get pulled over or something because I'm driving in the curfew? And I just realized that there's so many people that are out there protesting right now because they've lived every single day of their life with that kind of feeling. When I go out, if I go driving, when I go walking, I've got a chance for being stopped just for who I am. I don't understand what that's like. I am privileged that way. And, um, man, it's just, it breaks my heart to think about that. Anyway, kind of wrap it back up to where I was. I think the thing that I really want to stress here is you got to keep an eye. It's it's part of knowing your community. You got to keep an eye on what's going on out there. You got to know when there's things like that that are happening. And sometimes there are things that just blow up. Sometimes there are things that have been planned. You know, we'll have those marathons that close up almost all the streets in town. And we will have, you know, we got the 420 celebration that, uh, You know, COVID kind of put a kibosh on that this year, but, you know, that always clogs up downtown. So I know to stay out of town during some of those things. Sporting events, all sorts of different things. You got to get to know those types of things so you know the areas to avoid. Bottom line is stay tuned to what's going on. Folks, more than anything, though, I want to get back to this. 
understand what a good delivery is for you. You need to kind of define that rule for yourself first. And once you know that, I think you can kind of put all these pieces together we talked about and maybe not even have to go through those pieces to figure out the kinds of things that work for you on where to go. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about being the boss. It's about making your decisions. And that's what I'm asking you to do right now as we head out today. Let's go out there. Be the boss.